we wanted to really introduce um, our audience um, and, and uh, anyone who registered here uh, to the mini MBA program, which offers six interactive courses that provide a comprehensive overview of core business functions. So these courses together will allow you to understand the basics of all functional areas, such as applying strategy and providing strategic insights within your organization, and also learning to view the big picture of an organization and why all of these core areas are so important to a successful business. Um, you can also build connections and relationships through networking through this program and overall operate more effectively and efficiently when uh, working in a team environment. So with me today, uh, are three of our six uh, expert instructors, and we're very happy to have them here today. Uh, we have Diana Sarkis, David Van Wright, and Benny Rigi, and we can uh, get to know them a little bit more throughout the presentation. So, uh, our first uh, speaker is Diana Sarkis, um, and she will be teaching Human Resources Management Essentials. Uh, Diana holds a master's in industrial relations, a specialized advanced degree in human uh, resources and labor relations, and is also teaches in the select, in select graduate and undergraduate programs in the Odette School of Business. Uh, she has served um, the HR community as the chair of Human Resources Professional Association of Windsor. So Diana, I know you have a class right after this, so thank you for making the time to join us today. Can you speak more about, I guess, your background and your experience and what you'll be covering in the course? Absolutely, and thanks for having me here today. So ultimately, my session deals with the wonderful world of human resources. And if you haven't heard from my bio, I might be a little bit obsessed with the field. I'm just kidding. So ultimately, this uh, mini MBA is a really a pleasure to teach because ultimately how we we uh, developed the course was to really start off the course with the human resource foundations, right? So no matter where you are in your career, in some aspects, you're either dealing with people, overseeing people, or dealing with functions of human resources. So, you know, in this session, we, we talk about the foundations in regards to how to strategically build a team, how to hire the right people, what are the rules or laws and legislations um, in regards to employees. Other things we talk about are more advanced functions and in, in the sense that we take those HR functions that you're probably already exposed to. You know, oftentimes when I tell people, I worked in HR for over a decade, or now I teach HR, so with hiring, firing people, they know a lot about what HR does, but we actually bring those functions to a more strategic level in this session as well to match it more to make sense on, on how to serve your organization through HR functions. So as I indicated, it's, it's truly a pleasure to teach. We um, bring individuals from all different backgrounds. You bring your problems. It's very practical in that context. Um, we, we, as we go through different, um, concepts such as performance management, dealing with difficult employees, um, going through a termination, we utilize things such as role playing reflections and really give you the tools completely on how to do these, um, HR functions. So what else can I talk about about this session? Um, we also go into training and development, which definitely is one of my areas of passion in regards to, you know, if you have a struggling employee, oftentimes people want to do things such as performance managed management them out or go through a termination component. But I highly recommend, you know, the going the route through training and development and coaching. So that's all introduced in the mini MBA program of of the HR session, um, and then you do have access. So more likely you're coming to this MBA or mini MBA program with your own set of challenges. And we're always happy to talk about those challenges, support your unique HR challenges with additional resources and learning. Um, and I think that's all I really have to say about it. It's, it's really an exciting course um, and we have a lot of fun in the HR section. Great, thank you so much, Diana, um, for taking the time. And it does seem like a lot of good insights will be provided through um, this course, course itself. So if you have uh, any uh, questions that you didn't think about after 
um, this info session, please just email us uh, at continue at uwindsor.ca. Um, for any of our, our instructors, we'll make sure that uh, those questions get routed to them. Um, so, just uh, looking at, I know that, um, that David was running into some technical difficulties. So, uh, Benny, would you mind if uh, we talk about your course? Absolutely. Okay, let me just share your screen here. Okay, so uh, the next speaker we have is Benny Rigi, uh, who is our instructor for Finance Essentials. Um, Benny is now the Director of Financial and Planning and Analysis for DTE Energy, a Detroit-based diversified uh, energy company involved in development and management of energy-related businesses and services nationwide. Um, Benny, I know that there's much, much more to your extensive experience uh, within finance, so you're welcome to provide a little bit more of a background um, on your work uh, and, and then what you'll be covering in the course. Sounds great. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to talk to everybody. Uh, so yeah, I've been in uh, been in the finance field and in, in the in the corporate world for uh, just shy of 25 years now. Um, uh, mainly, I've gone through the accounting uh, and uh, kind of the corporate finance uh, functions. Um, as I mentioned, I'm currently a director for financial planning and analysis, which uh, really uh, pretty well everything that this course covers, uh, this finance course covers, is what I use every day. Um, and I'll get into exactly what it is as, as we go on. A little bit about my background. So I've worked for DTE for uh, 14, 15 years um, and just rotating through the finance organization. Prior to that, I worked for, uh, I guess now it's called uh, Stellantis. It used to be called uh, Fiat Chrysler. Um, when I joined, it was Daimler Chrysler. So it's a, bunch of a number of different iterations. But uh, so again, worked for two large corporations. Uh, uh, in uh, so far in my career, and it's been it's been a great experience. Uh, education wise, I'm a graduate of the University of Windsor. Uh, then my undergrad uh, in uh, in finance, uh, and then I pursued my MBA at Wayne State University. Um, also picked up a couple of designations along the way: the Chartered Financial Analyst designation and the uh, uh, Certified Public Accounting designation. So I try to bring a good mix of accounting, real world, and finance to to the course. So and really happy to, to share my experiences with, with the class. So the course itself, like I mentioned, um, I, I use the material every day, so I, I try to make it as practical uh, and uh, as as uh, practical as possible, so that you know the students can you know, learn something on Saturday, and then Monday hopefully start implementing it right away. So I, uh, I give you the concepts, but I really try to to give you a lot of uh, hands-on experience through workbooks and in-class uh, examples and such, and uh, really tangible stuff you can take back with you, like I said, and, and, and put it into practice on, on Monday morning. So really in this course here, we do a high-level introduction on uh, what finance means. Um, uh, finance, is, in my opinion, is you know, more forward-looking. Accounting is more score, I don't call it scorekeeping, but more backwards-looking, like, you know, here's what happened, here's the results, here's our income statement and, and balance sheet and, and uh, cash flow statement, which are, essential uh, to, to finance, to, 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 what, to what we talk about in, in our course. Uh, but finance definitely is more uh, forward-looking, forecasting, um, you know, trying to understand, uh, you know, what, what, uh, what happens in the economy and how does it affect my business, right? Uh, so again, we do a high-level introduction of, of what is finance. Then we get into some uh, practical modeling, and that's, uh, basic Excel functionality, but very important for, for finance, right? So we walk through how to set up a forecast, how to set up a model, um, understanding the concepts of how things interact with each other, uh, using accounting information from the financial statements to inform our decisions going forward about what we think will happen in, in, in the future. Uh, so we lay out that planning and modeling exercise. Uh, then we start touching into um, you know the, the cash budgeting as well. Uh, it's part of the, your your uh, it's part of your modeling. Uh, I tell people, you know, cash is king, right? If I uh, one example that I give my students all the time is, uh, if I promise to, uh, you know, if I give you a piece of paper that says congratulations, you're gonna get a million bucks, uh, you know, for doing this, but then I never pay you, it's not worth anything, right? So at the end of the day, cash is very important for business, especially. 
So we get into the cash budgeting fee, uh, functionality, um, uh, cash budgeting uh, modeling, uh, and that'll help really understand, you know, how my, what cash is coming into the business. How do I forecast my cash outflows? And just like balancing your checkbook, uh, you know, do I have to borrow uh, or do I have enough money at the end of the day that uh, I don't need to borrow anything or start paying down some debt? So we look at that uh, a lot. Another important concept is this uh, time value of money, uh, present value and future value. Uh, and for for finance, for evaluating uh, projects and businesses uh, and even budgeting, uh, understanding that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow is uh, very important, right? So again, going back to my million dollar example, I promise I'll give you a million dollars in 50 years from now. Uh, what, what's that worth for me today, right? Is it uh, not, definitely not a million bucks? So we get into the whole concepts of trying to calculate uh, the present value and, and uh, putting that into practice and evaluating projects and such. Uh, that feeds into this net present value uh, bullet that you see on your screen there, where again, we, we try to understand uh, how much does it cost today for a project to you know, buy equipment, um, put up a building or whatever. And then those future cash flows, what are they worth today? Uh, and is it a good project? Yes or no? And we get into understanding those concepts and working through some of the mechanics of that as well. And then more importantly, as we get towards the end, uh, we run into, uh, we'll, we'll start do, looking at sensitivities and scenarios. Uh, these are very important because, uh, again, as, as you guys know, being in, in, in the business world, uh, nothing is ever the way we think it's going to happen, right? Uh, we can't even predict the weather for two days from now, so let alone predicting economic outcomes a year from now. So uh, as part of our uh, forecasting process, you know, we look at sensitivities, right? If the economy gets better, if it gets worse, my sales go up, my sales go down, my costs go up, all that good stuff. We try to calculate and try to pull that into our uh, sensitivity analysis. So throughout the course, we do a lot of, uh, it's a, a lot of hands-on uh, examples together. There's workbooks that, um, uh, that that you guys will have and take and use. At the end, there is a, a case uh, study very short, uh, doesn't take very much time to do, but it just kind of brings all the concepts together into a, into a case study. Uh, it's template based, so it's uh, it's Excel based. You just simply go in and uh, you know work through the analysis. So it's again very uh, uh, straightforward, short, uh, and very applicable to like I said, taking the information and using it on Monday. Uh, you know when when you head into your uh, when you head back into your offices. So. That's a quick overview. Uh, there's a lot more to cover, but uh, hopefully that gives you a flavor of uh, of the course. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Sue. Thank you. Thank you, Benny, so much um, for that. And certainly, um, I think everyone works with finance in any organization. So I think this is a great uh, overview of, you know, and essentially, um, eventually, hopefully being able to work better with uh, those different areas and departments within the business as well. So that's great. Um, so our next speaker we have is uh, David Van Wright, and I'm going to share my screen again here. And hopefully. just a little... I'm sorry. Hopefully my audio is working there now. Your audio is working. Thank you. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our next speaker is David Van Wright. He uh, has over 30 years of accounting and audit experience as an auditor in both public and private se sector employers, ranging from small to multinational uh, sized businesses, and is also an instructor in the ODET School of Business. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we are fortunate to have David here today and as our accounting essentials instructor in the program. Um, David, uh, just in terms of your, your work experience, do you have anything else to add before we start your presentation? Well, no, thank you very much for the uh, for the introduction, and, and thank you to my my colleagues for covering for me while I uh, had my technical difficulties. It's great to be working with a great team, uh, so thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, just in uh, terms of uh, education and background, um, yes, I got over thirty years, but uh, that was back when you could start accounting when you were ten. So uh, no, actually, <laughs> um, 
My, my story is probably not your typical uh, accounting startup story. Uh, I didn't get into accounting until I was uh, in my early 20s. So uh, I didn't take any accounting courses in college, university um, until I turned 23. So it's, uh, it's one of those things that just kind of evolved for me. But uh, what I've enjoyed over the last 30 plus years is uh, as an auditor and you might think, how can how can you enjoy auditing for 30 years? And um, it's an individual thing, but I can honestly say in, in the 30 plus years, I never had two days the same. Uh, different types of businesses, different types of systems, you know, from, uh, you know, manufacturers. Uh, I've, I've audited two of the big three in Canada, uh, national banks. I've done three of the national banks, uh, some uh, gas pipelines, pharma companies. So they're all different hospitalities, educational institutions. So there's a lot of variety uh, within uh, doing an audit. So, you know, students will say to me, how can you be an auditor for 30 plus years? Don't you get bored? And it's like, no, it's 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 like a new new location every uh, week or two or perhaps every month. I've had the benefit, some say a benefit, some say a drawback of being able to travel to a lot of places that I really would not have been able to afford to go to before. So, um, you know, from the West Coast down through the States, um, you know, I, as a true accountant, it, it, was a, it was a cheap trip because it didn't cost me anything because my employer was paying. So, um, but, you know, accounting is, is, you know, it's the language of business. I mean, there's a lot of languages that are spoken in business and, and with this program here, you'll obviously get a, a taste of a, a little bit of every one of them. So, um, you know, I've, I'm happy to be at Odette since uh, January of 11 and uh, uh, it's, uh, I did uh, complete the MB or the CPA back a long time ago, back when we had three different accounting bodies. Um, I went the CGA route and then, you know, it was one of the three ways to do it and, and now it's consolidated into one. So, um, yeah, I've been at Odette since January of 11 and uh, remember my first day on campus, how welcoming everybody was there from the people helping me get into the parking garage, which was frozen, the gate to, uh, to all the staff there. So, uh, in, in terms of uh, accounting, uh, the course itself, I, I, I taught it last uh, last February and we had a very uh, diverse group and, and I say diverse in terms of uh, basically the, the areas that they um, have come from or we're working in. So a, a lot of seasoned professionals and as I mentioned earlier, accounting is, you know, one of the languages of business and it doesn't matter whether, you know, you're working in accounting or HR. Um, you know, finance, everybody, you know, needs to be cross trained these days. So if you're going to be in uh, in in HR, uh, you're, you're going to need to know about payroll costs and all of that stuff. And if you're in finance, obviously cash flow. And uh, I, love, I love Benny's comment there, cash is king, because that's actually a reference I use when we do our statement of cash flows, because cash really is king. If, uh, you know, businesses that don't succeed, and which is a nice way of saying businesses that fail, uh, it's not necessarily because they're not profitable. It's because they, they have less cash coming in than they have going out, just like, you know, you and I would be if we if we spend beyond our means, you know, we're, we're not going to be uh, we're not going to be viable for some time. But just getting back to uh, the group that we had last semester or sorry, last year. Very diverse backgrounds. We had uh, individuals that were uh, working in finance, uh, credit unions, um, healthcare, some people working in uh, the hospitals and the healthcare. We had some people from post secondary institutions. We also had retailers, in including uh, local car dealership owners that, you know, wanted to get a better understanding because, you know, the one individual from a one comment that was directed was uh, within the group was, you know, I, I need to know what my accountant's telling me because it cost me $100 an hour to get them to explain it to me. So the more you can have a better understanding of accounting, uh, the better prepared you will be for um, for the business world. Because as we know these days, more so perhaps than than ever before, uh, you know, it's an evolving world out there. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the companies that are not doing well are the ones that you know don't have that cash coming in. Uh, they have a number of fixed costs, whether it's rent or other fixed costs that they can't cover. So. Uh, I guess what I'm circling back to is, you know, because we had such a diverse group of uh, individuals from different sectors and of the of the business world, basically it underlies the importance that you you need to have a well-rounded uh, knowledge, you know, of of the key areas within a business, and which includes the accounting area as well. So I, I believe if you could please advance to the to the next slide, that would help me. So yeah, as as we know, we we need to have an accounting system. Uh, 
on a on a primitive nature, we we each have our own accounting system. And if you think back to when you were a student, and I'll think back to when I was a student, uh, we really needed to budget our cash, right? There is a certain you know finite amount of resources that you have available, and you have to monitor your your expenses and your revenues. And you know, even as we get older, we still need to be in that spot where we need to know where our money is coming from in terms of revenues, what our expenses are, which I refer to as cash out, uh, what we own in terms of our assets, and what we owe in terms of our liabilities. So we need to be aware of all of that. Uh, every business needs to be aware of, of where they're at. There's many of users that are out there, people that use the financial statements. And, you know, I guess one thing I'd like to stress is that the goal is over, you know, two days is not to have you become an accountant. Uh, that would probably be, uh, I don't know, how do I say it? it? It would probably be very uninteresting to do if we were trying to get through all of that material, um, obviously within the two days. The goal is basically to have you have a better understanding of the financial statements and what goes into them. So in terms of financial statements, you know, many times it's the the owners that need to be aware of it. As the as the person mentioned uh, last year, they get information from their accountant, but they're somewhat hesitant to call the accountant because they they know they're on the clock. Uh, most accounting firms bill for every six minutes of time. So if you can save yourself some money by you know being able to identify the information without needing to call the accountant, uh, that certainly helps you in terms of your uh, decision making that you might have to make. Can please advance to the next one. So there are external users. The external users of your financial statements could be uh, the bank, uh, creditors, or perhaps even potential business partners. If you want to sell to some of the large retailers or a government agency, you need to be able to provide your financial statements to them. So, you know, a lot of times when people talk about accounting, they they think of, you know, the accounting scandals that have happened in the past. And, and that's usually when uh, accounting makes the news, right? It's not the most, uh, it's not the most high profile uh, positions out there. They are well compensated positions, but it's not necessarily very high profile. And, and that's basically when they make the, the news is when something's gone wrong. And, you know, uh, hopefully in a few years, we'll no longer talk about Enron and some of the other scandals that have happened. But but Canada has had our share of accounting scandals too. the uh, the live ent entertainment and company out of Toronto. Uh, you know, that took a long time to get through the courts, but it's important for for individuals to have a basic understanding of how those financial statements could be rel relied upon and why people were still, you know, I don't want to say dumping, but pumping money into the company and buying the shares. So um, the users that are external to the company, they need it because, you know, again, uh, per perhaps looking at a, a some type of business relationship with the company. On the next slide, we focus on why it's important for the internal users, and these basically are usually the individuals that are, are signed up for this course because they're they're internal. Um, you know, the accountant may prepare their financial statements for them, or they may prepare their own, but it's important for them to be aware of what information they can get from the financial statements. And and these days, you know, the timeliness of the information is much more quicker than it used to be. You can generate your financial statements, uh, you know, relatively quick using the different accounting information systems that are out there. But as a business owner, you need to be able to identify some of these key things, uh, you know, revenue sources. Okay, where are you getting your revenues from? And we've seen that a lot with, you know, businesses that have, have had to make changes, you know, no longer the dine in restaurant, maybe it's all takeout. A lot of the places that have done well uh, or better than others will just say, uh, over the last 20 months or so have been those businesses that were already set up for that takeout. Their their business was relatively uh, streamlined for that. And again, it depends on what it is that you're selling. If you think back, you know, the early days of the, the pandemic where, you know, nobody could buy yeast. Well, we couldn't buy yeast, but, you know, the pizza places and the bakeries, they could all buy yeast. And again, it goes back to you know being able to identify these trends and and having good relationships with your suppliers. Along with sales revenue, you got to know what you're selling, what you're making money on. Yeah, you know, sales folks and the individuals in marketing will be great at saying we need to spend more on advertising and marketing because we're going to generate sales. And it, it's usually the the accounting folks that are I'll say the negative Normans that say. Yeah, but if we spend that money, we're not making as much profit. So uh, the nice thing about accounting is it tends to be somewhat more objective. Uh, and basically it comes down to dollars and cents along that line. 
So in terms of profitability, you may be making a lot of sales, but are you profitable? If we look at what uh, the automotive manufacturers are producing these days, you can't buy, go to the dealership and buy the base model. Okay, they've only got they've got constraints. They've only got a certain number of chips that they can use in their vehicles. So the vehicles they're selling, and I know this firsthand because I'm looking for a vehicle, and unless I want to buy the top of the line model, I'm not going to be able to buy that. Um, so businesses have to adjust based on you know what constraints they might uh, have in terms of their supplies, and and we see that firsthand. Okay, also looking at trends, I know there's some an element there for for data analytics. You know, you've got to be able to identify trends with your your customers. And I, at the bottom line there I have there is, you know, can you pay your suppliers? Uh, nothing worse for a business than for them to not be able to make payroll. Okay, and and really we know what's going to happen when a company can't make their payroll. Uh, you know, think of yourself as an employee. How long are you going to stay as an employee if the employer says, you know, we, we like the work you did, Dave, but we, we can't pay you next week, but uh, we're hoping to pay you the, the week after. Um, these days, people are not going to stick around. Um, understandably, why? Well, you know, goes back to they, their own accounting system. They have bills and expenses that are expected to come out of their, their bank account at the end of the week, and they're expecting you as the employer to pay them in good faith and have that money deposited at ideally before that happens. So. Okay, so as internal users, that's one of the things we need to have or many things we need to be aware of. The four financial statements we're going to look at. Uh, this is basically in the order in which we prepare them and we're not going to, you know, as much as we're going to deal with the you know, the uh, the party killing term, which I refer to as debits and credits. Um, as I said, nothing kills a party more than talking about debits and credits. Um, we're going to talk about how debits and credits are used and how they form these four financial statements. But we're not going to we're not going to we're not going to delve too deeply into uh, debits and credits. So if you if you're uh, a risk adverse person and you, your thought may be, uh, I don't think I'm going to take accounting because I'm not good at math. The only math we're doing is add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And as I tell my students on day one, if you got a dollar store calculator, or now a buck twenty-five, if you've got that dollar store calculator, you'll be fine. It's more about how we do it, what we include, as opposed to the mechanics of it. So, just briefly, the income statement—that's uh, where you hope to have good, more good news than bad news. The good news is revenue; the bad news is expenses. But that gives you an idea as to how profitable you are. Statement of owner's equity. Basically, that gives you an idea as to how much you, as the owner of the business, own of the business. We see houses that are going for a million dollars. They may have a $600,000 mortgage on it, so really you own a $400,000 house. So that's what the statement of owner's equity does. Statement of financial position, or uh, if you're old school like me, you may have learned it as a balance sheet, and the whole idea is it has to balance. Statement of financial position, represents what you have as assets, what you owe on them as liabilities, and what you own is your equity. And the last one is sometimes the forgotten fourth child of the four statements. And personally, as an auditor, it's the one I look at first. It's the statement of cash flows. How much cash do they have coming in? How much cash flow do they have going out? How did they generate this cash? It may look great that they have a lot of cash flow coming in, but if they have a lot of cash flow coming in because they've sold the assets off, you got to be a little bit concerned because these assets may be the assets that were generating profits for them. So it, it kind of gives you a little bit more ideas to what it is that you have to look for. And uh, I'm going to coin the same phrase that Benny used, and I think we, we learned it not necessarily from the same instructor, but uh, the same course, cash is king. Because really at the end of the day, for a business, if you can't make those payments, if you can't pay your staff, if you can't pay for your uh, utilities, and these days if you can't pay for your internet, uh, you're not going to be around very long. So that's uh, what we're going to do is try to tie these four together. And uh, and like I said, we'll we'll do all four, and we'll not only just look at preparing them, and there'll be exercises that you're going to do in class, as well as uh, take home exercises that we'll take up, but between the Saturdays. But uh, it's not just a matter of getting the mechanics and getting things, the numbers right. It's being able to interpret it. And, um, you know, there used to be a catchphrase for one of the accounting bodies, which is, you know, we see more than numbers. And, and that's what the goal is to have you not just be able to do the math part of it, which is mechanical, but also to understand the concepts and the importance of the different items that you get out of the financial statements. OK, so thank you very much again. 
And again, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, certainly be happy to answer those by by email. And I believe we are the first up class this semester, so uh, we'll, we'll see you on hopefully on uh, February 5th and 12th. And thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Um, so much information and and I think that you know as we go through too uh, and as a marketing person you're completely right in the fact that yes we do need more budget for marketing <laughs> so <laughs> um okay so thank you so much David that was great um so the next course is Marketing Essentials uh, with uh, Dr. Vincent Georgi. Um, unfortunately, he's unable to join. He was scheduled to join. He um, got pulled away last minute, so I will be covering uh, some of the, the course um, outcomes uh, and the course material uh, in this info session. Um, so just a little bit on Dr. Georgi. He is the Acting Associate VP External as well as Director of School of Creative Arts at U Windsor and a marketing professor at um, the Odette School of Business as well, and is the executive director and chief programmer of the Windsor International Film Festival. Um, so again, Dr. Georgie couldn't join us to get today. However, he does encourage any questions to be directed to continue at uwindsor.ca, and he will um, definitely uh, answer any questions you may have about the program. So just a, a little bit of an overview about uh, Marketing Essentials. This is a six hour course. Uh, it's an introduction to the principles, concepts and techniques of marketing. Significant uh, objective of this class is to develop the basic understanding of marketing processes and its role in, in an organization. Um, additionally, the class will focus on um, the marketing manager's need to make decisions with fluctuating and limited information and a better understanding of client management, client decision making, and the co complexities of uh, marketing itself. Uh, this course will empower you to uh, make not only better marketing decisions, but more strategic marketing decisions as well. Um, you will be applying these class concepts by conducting a marketing analysis as, as the project um, and a marketing analysis of an organization of your choice. So it could even be your current um, organization uh, as well. So by the end of this course, you'll have the ability to make viable marketing decisions based on complex, partial and uh, competing information, engage marketing strategy to make these decisions, assimilate multiple points of information to shape the wisest possible decision and explain the importance of socially responsible marketing decisions. Um, marketing is an exciting field of study, uh, taps into your knowledge of economics, psychology, sociology, and other business fields, as well as your powers of observation. Um, and that's where I guess I could speak to my own experience as a marketing person. Um, it's where my passion for marketing comes into play as well is just having that ability to apply strategy and really just understanding consumer behaviors. That's that's the um, the most interesting part of marketing to me. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is marketing essentials. Um, again, any questions can be directed to continue at uwindsor.ca. Um, the next is Data Analytics Essentials uh, with Dr. Fuzia Baki. So this, this fifth course that I'll review um, is Data Analytics Essentials. Um, so a little bit on Dr. Baki as well. Uh, she is also taught in the Adult School of Business and is the recipient of the Master of Management Faculty of the Year Award and is frequently um, teaching quantitative analysis for logistics and supply chain management. Uh, quantitative decision making among many other data related database classes. Uh, she's dedicated to promoting an active and engaging environment for learners. Um, a little bit about um, data analytics in a nutshell. So data analytics essentials is a 12 hour course and is geared towards professionals who would benefit from analyzing and understanding data, obtaining business insights and communicate key points to members of their organization. Uh, for the course assignment, learn learners will be exploring the capabilities of analytics software tools, uh, type of data analysis, and um, when to focus. So you'll be using Microsoft Excel uh, for this class as well. Um, and you'll be using it for data visualization and constructing a hypothetical employee turnover decision tree. 
uh, it is recommended that you have working knowledge of uh, Microsoft Excel for this course, uh, which we are offering, or for this program in general, and we are offering that in January prior to the start of this program. Um, if you are unsure if you have the knowledge in Excel to take this course, we do have an online assessment to gauge your knowledge um, that would be sufficient to take um, this course or take the introduction to Microsoft Excel prior to this course. So uh, all details can be found on our website at continue.uwindsor.ca. Uh, and just breezing along to our last uh, course here, Strategic Management Essentials, uh, taught by Dr. Tony Mao. And Tony, uh, Dr. Tony Mao is the instructor. Uh, it is a nine hour course and uh, he is a business professor and professor and a strategic consultant with over 30 years of global business experience as an entrepreneur and a senior manager for multinational companies. He's the founder of KM Consulting, a consultant entity specializing in international expansion and organizational change management. He has taught capstone strategy courses in the undergraduate, graduate, and professional levels for over 15 years. Um, as an educator, his goal is to be uh, a great teacher who inspires his students to be self-motivated, lifelong learners. And just a little bit of an overview on strategic management essentials. This class is to, uh, designed to develop strategic problem solving abilities of students in many MBA program. This intense nine hour course focuses on the application of strategic management processes, strategies, principles, analytical frameworks and tools by using a combination of lectures, readings, and active learning through case studies. There's a case study where learners put on the hat of a CEO and learn how to be the chief executive officer um, to apply strategy principles, conduct uh, problem solving across functional barriers, and formulate viable business strategies in order to achieve competitive advantage for an organization. So that seems like a great project, a great um, learning opportunity definitely to be applied within your organization. And uh, this is really all six courses combined really gives you a good holistic picture of um, a business and all and why all of these core areas are so important to a successful business. Um, so before we start the Q&A, there's just a little bit more <laughs> that I, I should go over. Uh, so again, the mini MBA is 15 Saturday mornings. So um, very, very, this is a short program. Um, it's online. Um, the fee is 2625 plus HST. However, uh, there are bundle discounts available. There are discounts for you and our alumni, staff, and students. Um, just email us for the discount codes. Uh, this class is also... Um, eligible for OSAP micro-credential application. The courses are recognized um, by the Ontario government as micro-credentials, which means that they, they do teach the skills that are apl applicable in the workplace. So uh, that's a very important key factor um, in taking these courses that you can then apply that knowledge. Um, and then also, if you are from an organization or a leader in your organization, um, we do have the Canada-Ontario Job Grant Program uh, which your organization can apply for if you want to send someone from your team into this program as well. Uh, that is also an option. Again, I'd like to mention um, the Microsoft Excel, which we're offering in January, just, just prior to this, uh, this program. Um, and it is in the evenings as well. So all details can be found on continue.uwindsor.ca. With that said, we can start the Q&A. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, sharing my screen and we can have a look at the chat here. So the first question is, can you pay for each course separately? Yes, you can. Um, the course fees uh, are, um, they vary because some of the classes are contain more hours than others. Um, so all of the fees and information is located at, on our website, continue.uwindsor.ca. Um, you can also take the courses individually as well. Um, you don't have to take all six. However, if you do complete all six, you'll get the mini, a, mini MBA certificate issued by the University of Windsor Continuing Education. Um, another 
question is, do I need prior business experience to take these courses? What are the prerequisites? So I don't know if there's anyone, uh, any of our speakers that would like to speak to that or if not, I, oh, Benny. I would say uh, there's no prerequisites other than just the willingness to learn um, and uh, you know, having an open mind. And I would say Excel, um, Sue, so, uh, so you mentioned that a number of times. So I would say at least for the finance course, I'm assuming for the, uh, obviously for the data analytics course, some basic knowledge of Excel would be helpful, but uh, no prior business experience needed. Um, so welcome. Um, yeah, likewise from accounting, um, it, it's, uh, as Benny said, basically the desire to learn or interest to learn. Um, you know, we, we start at basically accounting 101. So I, I think I, based on my past class that we had, uh, there was some folks that had never seen accounting before and, and they were able to succeed in the course. So we, we do have it set that way. So just uh, along with that, just some basic computer skills um, is recommended as well. Um, it is online, so internet access, all of that. So it's pretty op open and we wanted to really make it accessible um, for anyone who you know wants to learn, uh, maybe upskill or you know even learn a little bit of top line information about the departments that they work with every day, right? So, um, so this is really a, an open to all course or pro uh, program. Um, I can definitely provide the length of each course for you. Um, so we have, so, uh, accounting essentials is six hours. So it's two Saturdays. Finance essentials is two Saturdays. So six hours again, marketing, same thing. Um, six hours, human resources is also six hours. Um, data analytics is I believe 12 hours and strategic management essentials is nine hours. Uh, after successfully completing this mini MBA, what can I write on my resume? Diana. I know, I was gonna say, I yeah. can't. <laughs> so typically you can put it under education, just being very clear that it's a mini MBA certificate. Oftentimes, especially more senior professionals will have a um, training and development area of their resume or, or certifications. You can put it either or. I just caution you to indicate it's a mini MBA certificate through the University of Windsor's continuing education department recognized. I know when I uh, recruit people who take the time to continuously learn uh, are typically favorable candidates. So um, there's also someone asking uh, how many assignments and hours to allocate um, outside of class. So, so for finance, uh, we do kind of in-class assignments, and then you can feel free to review them you know, in between Saturdays. And there is a case study at the end, which may take one to two hours max. It, it's not, it's not very long, and uh, just make sure that it, it helps tie everything all together for you. In, in terms of accounting, I, I kind of go with the the one to one ratio. We have six hours of class, so you sh probably should be able to dedicate, including doing the uh, end, of, end of course uh, completion. Uh, assignment probably one hour per class, so I would say you would need, uh, you know, six hours uh, on your own time and six hours in class um, to to get the full benefit out of the the course itself. I would say for HR about two hours, um, depending on your level of enthusiasm. Students often like to explore further, so you can go up to six. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if you want to, uh, for the individual who asked that question, if you want to just email us um, that question, just so we have your email, and then I can respond to you um, with what the, the extra hours are for the other classes as well, since um, we don't have our speakers here today. Um, another question is, Will the presentation be shared? Yes, the presentation will be shared. I will uh, email a link to everyone in the uh, 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 the link to the video, um, which will have the presentation in it. Um, 
Will there be limitations to the number of people in the program and what is the last date for registration? So we typically like to uh, see uh, registrations. The last of our registrations come in um, at least one week prior to the first start date. Um, and then there is there is a limit. Uh, if you want to email us that question as well, we can give you the, the exact um, number of students. Um, uh, if you're if, if that is one of your uh, concerns there uh, do any of these courses transfer to MBA for managers and professionals so these are non credit courses uh, which means that they're for your professional development they um, are non academic so none of the, these courses can transfer to uh, the full MBA uh, do you think this certificate will be seen as valuable as valuable by employers So I have, I have two important uh, points that I want to make actually that would address both questions. And actually this comes from my own personal experience. Um, before I actually went on and did a master's degree in labor relations, I did a, a mini program similar to this. And not only did I find it kind of prepared me back into the academic world, but additionally it prepped me for that full master level program because I didn't have a background in labor relations. So those of you who are thinking, you know, is this worth my time knowing that eventually I may want to do the MBA for managers and professionals or just the MBA, this might be a good buffer to go to that full degree. The other person who asked about, is it valuable to employers? I would say absolutely yes, especially someone actually like the three of us, we're all very specialized in accounting, finance, HR, but to take the initiative to go on and say, I took this certification that really enhanced my, and mind you, not an accounting or, or a, a finance professional, but I feel like taking that initiative really does show your employer, you know, depending on your own motivations, I want to take my career to the next level. And I took the motivation to seek out this program and I, I don't think you'd be disappointed, truly. And just a little bit, uh, just to speak to the caliber of instructors that we have, um, their experience and their, you know, their own life and work experience that they bring to this uh, program, as well as the quality of content that will be brought to this program, I think is really invaluable. I think uh, even just you know, for your own knowledge and for your own growth as well. So uh, really invaluable. We have an amazing lineup of instructors, like truly, truly amazing. If I can just add to what's uh, what's been said, I think it's a particular value if uh, if there's been some gaps on your resume as to when was the last time you were in school. Um, I can just speak for myself, you know. There was a time where I, I I didn't go back from my master's till about uh, 15 years after and uh, after I graduated. And once I got the master's, that's when the opportunity seemed to come up. And it was for me, it was great being able to put the the MBA, you know, in the cover letter, in the resume. So if there if there's been a period of time where you, you haven't been in school and, uh, you know, employers will ask, what have you been doing? You know, they may not ask it directly, but by, by indicating that you've completed something on your own initiative, to me that says a lot about a person. So it means that they're taking themselves and their career seriously. And you know, I've been on interview boards where individuals say, well, I don't have any experience and okay, but my next follow-up question is, what else have you done? If you don't have experience in this line of work, what have you done to, to further your education and your knowledge base? And, and I, I believe this would be a, a great thing to have on there to fill that void if there's been a few years. Yeah, I would agree with what uh, with what my colleagues here have said. I mean, anything that you can put in a resume to show that you're constantly improving yourself and continuing your education, it's valuable, right? Uh, more you can put on a piece of paper, the better, right? Right, Diana? <laughs> um, I could also, again, speak, speak to my personal experience as well. And it's uh, true, like, uh, uh, yes, I had a lot of work working experience in marketing, um, but I mean, my what I went to school for back in the day was graphic design. So, um, you know, going through continuing education courses uh, allowed me to really fill in the gaps of, you know, yes, I was getting hands-on experience. However, um, I, 
I was able to truly learn what the best practices were going through uh, continuing education courses. So uh, it really helped me. And, and that's why I'm in this like here today is, is through uh, those courses as well. So. Um, so we have another question here. Uh, is it, it is this a common program in the business world as it is offered by other universities? Diana, did you want to speak to that? Well, I thought someone else was going to say I, oh. it is. Um, you know, I've been recruiting for the past 13 years. I've seen it many times. Uh, what I'm so passionate and excited about is University of Windsor. This is kind of new, the continuing education uh, department, but Western, um, who else is out there? Waterloo, the one Hamilton, I don't know what that is, McMaster. Um, I've seen these programs offered consistently from employees that we've had, employees that we've hired, um, definitely recognized, absolutely. So uh, another person had asked, can you take these these courses separately? Yes, you absolutely can. If you uh, want, you know, if you're a marketing whiz and you just you want some, you know, uh, an introduction to, to accounting, yes, take accounting. Um, so you don't have to, but if you do complete all six, you do get the certificate. Um, we do have a few minutes left. Uh, any other questions? Uh, if not, you can definitely uh, direct any other questions you can think of to continue at, I'll put this in the chat, continue at uwindsor.ca. And I thank you um, to our speakers uh, for your time. Thank you so much, you're all busy. Oh, there's one person. Okay, so there's another question. What if you miss one course since it is online, can we access recorded classes? Uh, we do attempt Sorry, Benny, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think we do, we do try to record the classes. Um, so, but go ahead. So. Yeah, we do attempt to record the classes, uh, given that there are no te technical glitches. Um, however, the, the uh, I guess it, it, the expectation is that you're, you're making it to the live online instruction just to get the full experience um, of, the, of the lesson um, as well. So. If I can just add, uh, a lot of what we do is in class, um, collaborative. So I would encourage the uh, the attendance. Um, it's it, I'm not saying it's hands on, but it, we do work on things together as a group. So I, I believe being in online, uh, you know, concurrent with the class would be more beneficial than playing back than playing back lectures at a later time. Yeah, even if you can only make it for an hour or two out of the class, right? I mean, it's it's so important to be able to have that interaction. Plus the networking piece, right? You're going to meet other participants who are going to bring value to your education. I had to add that, sorry. Mm -hmm. Valid, yeah. very valid. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah, so so that so it really it, it is more beneficial to to attend uh, classes and the commitment isn't, you know, that great either. It's it's three hours for two Saturdays per course. Uh, for the most part, some some of the courses are for Saturdays. However, um, with that said, I mean, it, it's still, you know, a few hours every Saturday and then 15 Saturdays and you're done, right? So, um, yeah, so that so that's uh, really it's it's a short these are short courses and same with you know any continuing education course that we have as well we offer short courses that can be applied um you know to your everyday life to your your work as well so so the question is should we set up excel ahead of time on our computer uh, if if it is a class that requires excel uh, you will be provided access to excel microsoft excel Okay, is there any other questions that are coming in? A few more minutes left. Uh, if not, we can. Uh, oh, sorry. oh sorry, go ahead, David. One, one comment, you, you, yes. you mentioned the Excel word and I, I can't help but uh, oh, okay. uh, comment on that. If you're, if you're proficient in Excel and you're looking to work in accounting, I'm just staying with accounting, make sure that's front and center on your resume. Um, so many employers that I talk to out there are really, finding a challenge in getting individuals that are not only able to understand the concepts of the business, but 
being able to apply it into Excel and pretty much every accounting system out there these days can be exported into Excel. So if, if you have strong Excel skills, please, I suggest you put it on your resume. And if you have strong Excel skills and it's on your resume, be prepared for employers to, to do a test on Excel. You know, I, I'm old. I can say back in the day, you know, you had to be, your test was being able to type. It's not there anymore. The test that's out there is, you know, can you do the critical thinking and can you do Excel? And uh, so again, uh, it, it is really a big emphasis these days for budgeting and everything else from accounting um, that you have strong Excel skills. Employers will hire those with those strong Excel skills before any other skill set because it's easier for them to teach them that skill set as opposed to Excel. But again, be cautious if you have it or if you say it, make sure you can back it up because they will test you. It's their screening process, which is understandable. Very good point, David. Um, even if you look at, you know, all, like the job postings that are out there right now, one of the requirements is Microsoft Excel. So um, it's such a universal software um, that you can use in any workplace. So. Great. Um, how does the bundle discount work? Uh, if you get 10% off of each course, if you register for all six courses at once. So that's how that works. And um, the discount code is actually on our website, continue.uwindsor.ca. Uh, okay, I think we're all set. Again, if you have any other questions, email us, continue at uwindsor.ca. And um, thank you so much, Benny. Diana, David, uh, appreciate everything, everything leading up to this as well. <laughs> Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Have a good day, Thank everyone. everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.